for personal reasons, for family reasons, I didn't have the best childhood. I didn't have a lot of support for the things I wanted to do. In fact, I had a lot of resistance to those things. And I think part of it was looking back over the years is I was just trying to prove to myself and to other people I could do what I wanted, you know, that I was worth something. And so, you know, I chose some paths that way. I, I never expected the pat on the back or the support from my family. So, like, a, you know, that's a good thing and a bad thing, obviously. You pay a pretty big price for that in your life. But what it does is it allows you to not worry so much about what other people think, because they already think, <laughs> they already think you're not doing very well. And so what, what do you have to lose, really, you know? So I think partly in my early life, I picked paths that were really opposed to what the people that raised me wanted. So I was kind of out on my own, you know, right, right early on. The other thing is I was raised in a family that from the outside looked pretty good. My father went to an Ivy League college. My mother was very smart. And, you know, we belonged to a country club, you know, all that stuff. But I saw it from the inside, and, and it wasn't what I wanted. And I got to associate with people who also were raised that way, and I saw their lives, and I saw their parents' lives, and it wasn't a life I wanted because it, it, it wasn't a life worth having. It was a, it was a, it was a life about things and about things that weren't, weren't really that important. And I didn't, I didn't want that life. And I kind of rebelled as a kid against that kind of life. And, you know, you pay a price for that. Because there, there are good things about that. But when I was young, I couldn't, I couldn't really see them. So I, I never had an allegiance to the system. I never really believed, you know, that the government told the truth or that adults told the truth or the policemen told the truth. I mean, I saw it firsthand. And when I worked in the inner city, it just reinforced my beliefs that the system has its own agenda and that agenda may or may not be there to help me or to the kinds of people that I care about. And if you want to do something and you want to change, you know, it, it's a risk. I knew at an early age there was no safe space for me. So once you know that, it's kind of scary, but it forces you to try to create a world for yourself. I didn't grow up trying to live, you know, the American dream. I'd seen the American dream, and to me it was not a dream, it was kind of a nightmare. I know when I talk with Chris, when we work together on a regular basis, I mean, the worst thing you can say to him is this is how the other guy does it. And he's not really interested in how the other guy does it. He's interested in looking at what is the best way to do it? And if that's the way the other guy does it, so be it, let's do it that way. But most of the time there's a better way to do it and he's willing to be open to that. What's always interested me about all this is people, especially people from outside Los Angeles, they look at movie stars and they look at all these people and you know they want to be like them, they idolize them, they tune them on TV and they, they talk about their lives, you know? But what they don't realize is the worst of the people out here have taken enormous risks to get here. Enormous risks. They're, 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 not, they're not willing to take, to take the risk. You know, that's really, that's really the difference. And that's how you get somewhere. These people here have rolled the dice. And as you know, if you live here, if you've been here, you know, there's a lot of people here that didn't make it, that are, you know, doing something, something else. Uh, but they came and they tried. I, I remember I was doing some work with uh, alcoholics and homeless people and such here a few years ago, and this fellow that we were working with, he had to go for a job interview. He was a really good guy. He was maybe in his 40s. And we were going uh, out here. There are places where you can go, and they will you know, provide clothes for you, appropriate clothes for a job interview. That's what they do. And then when you're done, you return them. And he was telling me, he was sitting in the back seat, and he was a southerner, and he's telling me we were talking about something. And he says, well, you know, my daddy said, my daddy said this. And I said, <laughs> what you're, he said, I do, I, I live my life the way my daddy said. And I said, yeah, so let me see if I have this right. You're an alcoholic, you have no job, you're in the back of the car, I'm driving you to get clothes for an interview. Maybe it's time you should rethink what your daddy said. <laughs> and I'll give him credit, instead of slugging me, he just paused quietly. And as it turned out in his case, it was a job that I had recommended him for. He got the job and he had it for like five years and he did a wonderful job. And you know, that's what we all, we all face, you know. We all face that challenge is to go against the rules, to go against our upbringing, 
to think for ourselves and become who we really need to be, it's a big challenge. It's an enormous challenge because we're not programmed that way. We're just not programmed to be ourselves. Thank you.